All right, guys, just a quick forward to pretty much all of the Dutch bucket system videos um, from here until such time as I've accumulated enough knowledge to uh, pass on. I am doing this obviously for the first time. So uh, please forgive any mistakes that I make along the way. Um, and if you have any advice, uh, please pass on that advice, uh, whether it be in the comments of the videos uh, or on the Who Shows subreddit. That being said, enjoy watching me make mistakes. <laughs> Welcome back to Who Chose. So today, we're going to plant out our Dutch bucket hydroponic system, uh, which I built in uh, this recent video. Uh, and we're going to plant it out with the seedlings that we've raised in a 50-50 vermiculite perlite mix in our container um, with our propagation dome that I also did a video on here. So to remove the seedlings from our 50-50 perlite vermiculite mix, uh, you can literally just, by just grabbing the seedling by the cotyledon leaves. Now the cotyledon leaves are the leaves that are the first two leaves that the seedling pushes out. Uh, they will have a different look to the true leaves on the seedling. And if you grab it by these leaves, uh, it, it won't damage the stem even if you pull too hard. So, I mean, you can still damage the plant, so be careful. But if you pull up on the seedling, like so, uh, this won't damage the stem as much as if you were to pull by grabbing the stem. So grab your seedling by the cotyledon leaves and just put it aside ready to be planted. And as you can see, we've got the full root stock of the plant out and that's come even out of the reservoir underneath. And if the seedlings are clumped together, like this little clump of seedlings, we can just throw them in some water and use the buoyancy of the perlite and the weight or the uh, density of the vermiculite, and it will separate the media so that you can wiggle them free. These ones might be a bit too close. There we go. I should have planted. I should have planted them um, slightly further apart. <laughs> All right. Now that I've got my seedlings ready, I'm just going to plant them uh, in the appropriate buckets. Uh, and yeah, don't do it when it's hot. <laughs>
All right, so the seedlings are planted. Now I'm going to fill up my res, uh, mix my nutrient in, uh, adjust the pH, and we can set the system running. So this is why you don't do it when it's hot. Uh, these seedlings are wilting. I would much prefer to have done this in the afternoon uh, when we get full west shading uh, from the westerly sun. And they would have had a whole night to adjust to their new environment. But here we are. Hopefully they bounce back. I'll let you know. It'll probably be the next shot anyway. <laughs> so, we made it. Uh, these are now shaded from the worst of the sun in the midday by one large gum tree, which is exactly what I wanted. And that gum tree ends and gives a little bit more sun in the afternoon, and then most of the westerly sun is blocked out, um, or at least patchy. Whereas if these are in the sun throughout the midday of our summer, they get cooked. So it's been about five days since I planted these seedlings. They're doing really well. I've had the pH sitting on about 6 to 6.5, and the EC is sitting on about 2 to 2.4. Now, uh, this is because I'd already hardened them to hydroponic nutrient, full hydroponic nutrient. So I didn't need uh, to slowly bring them up to a uh, full nutrient. Uh, and that will depend on the hydroponic nutrient you're using. So don't take that as gospel. It's about 10.30. So they're starting to droop because the sun's getting really intense right now. Um, it's hard to look at them because they're so, you know, the buckets are so bright. And, uh, but they're doing really well. Uh, I've obviously spaced them uh, tomato capsicum, tomato capsicum. So... Uh, I'm hoping to put a trellis in at some point uh, to guide the tomatoes, train the tomatoes, and um, get them up above the height that the capsicums will grow to. So initially, I had the system running on a 30-minute uh, irrigation cycle six times a day. I've now cut that down to 15 minutes six times a day. The reason being, with my experience uh, with hydroponic systems, uh, you want the plants to um, be able to almost exhaust the nutrient before irrigating again because this is giving that uh, fluctuation between, uh, you know, uh, wet, waterlog and dry, uh, the oxygen to nutrients and water. So uh, you want oxygen to be able to uh, penetrate back through the media um, and replenish uh, all of the uh, air spaces within it you don't want to waterlog those roots. So less is more as far as I'm concerned with irrigation times. Uh, I've changed the initial 30 uh, six times a day to 15 minutes six times a day. Um, and I'm probably gonna cut that back to 15 four times a day um, and possibly even introduce a digital timer where I can get those irrigation cycles down even further. One of uh, my viewers actually uh, commented um, on the original video. Uh, this is the comment. And he said, uh, put in uh, holes in the side of your containers to hold these irrigation pipes, uh, irrigation tubes in um, place. And I didn't. And uh, a couple days uh, or one day later, I came out and... Uh, the tube on the end had drained the whole reservoir um, onto the ground. Uh, and I was lucky that I didn't lose any plants uh, and that I actually checked it in time. Uh, so thank you for the advice. And I've taken it. Um, it. It took me, you know, uh, 
almost disaster to take it, but I took it. So yeah, if you're going to make this kind of system, yeah, make sure these tubes can't get out. I was actually going to put stakes in it first, but uh, they charge an arm and a leg for a piece of plastic when you can just use um, your ingenuity. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll keep you updated. See you next time on Who Chose.